Hey everyone, welcome back. Matthew Harris here. Thanks for joining us on a very special video featuring some work by us, tying in with an amazing historical piece by blacksmith Samuel Yellen. Check this out. Blacksmith Samuel Yellen operated an amazing shop in Philadelphia. And what you're looking at here is part of a bank teller screen made for the Federal Reserve Bank in New York City. The job began in 1921 and was finished about three years later. Now this piece was cut out uh, about 25 years ago from the bank as they did some remodeling and was saved by my friend Pete Renzetti. Um, you can take a look here at a photo from the Historical Society of New York City of a sample grill. And then here's another photo of some more of the work for the Federal Reserve Bank produced by Yellen Shop. But what we are tasked to do is to recreate some missing pieces at the top of this. Now, it all has to be forged out of real wrought iron. So what you can see uh, one of our blacksmiths doing here is beginning to break down some larger bars of wrought and forge them down to a very specific size. Everything has to match up perfectly and um, be true to the texture as well. So we've really studied the texture on the original as well as the sizes. Everything was measured with dial calipers to get the sizing exactly right. So again, we just begin by uh, forging down some larger bars into about a 5 8 um, octagon. And then we made a custom die because all of the crossbars on this were uh, right around 9 16 of an inch round. It's an odd size, not something uh, readily available, especially in wrought iron. So by forging this down on the power hammer, we can get the size exact as well as the texture so that when um, our pieces are welded into the original, um, there'll be an exact match. Here you can see uh, an intern, Paul Riley. He was with us for the week that we were doing this. He's from the American College of um, Building Arts in Charleston, South Carolina. And um, he helped with this project as well as my main smiths, uh, Jared and Andrew. Um, so there were four of us working on this project. Here you can see Andrew um, skillfully hammering down that material into the exact 9 16 round using the die that we created to uh, get the sizing correct. Uh, you can see our fancy little uh, bumper stop uh, to take some of the shock out with a a bit of duct tape and a glove. It's not stupid if it works. And like I said earlier, we really studied the texture and it had a bunch of small flats. So that's what we're doing here is going back on the power hammer and just hammering a little bit of that subtle texture into the surface finish of the material. Now, these are the crossbars which the other bars will pass through so what we do is uh, we create what's called a pass through which we have other videos on this technique but we begin here by heating in a very isolated spot exactly where we want that pass through to take place and then i'm doing a technique here called upsetting which is hammering down on the bar to make the bar in that little tiny spot just a little bit thicker to allow for some reduction in size once we do the next steps, which are slitting the bar and then drifting the bar. So we're building up the mass by upsetting it just in those isolated spots. And we did a lot of testing um, to determine what our center to center from one hole to the next would be how much shrinkage we would get and um, just, you know, how much it, each bar would move. So uh, once we had that figured out, that gave us the ability to uh, locate both upsets um, in each bar and a very exact spot um, by isolated heating. And then, like I said, um, upsetting, which is um, hammering the bar down on itself to make that bar thicker. And we were very precise with all of this 
Um, even the um, sizes of the upsets were checked with dial, dial calipers. Um, and you can see that bar gets thicker where it's hot. And so that's the reason that I'm straightening it over the hardy hole to give that little swell or upset um, a place to go. And I can get the rest of the bar um, totally true and straight. Once the upsets were complete, we could then begin this process, which is called slitting. Now this chisel that I'm holding um, that has a handle on it uh, gives us the ability to cut through the bar very precisely. And what we're doing here is really just a test piece. We slid it and then we tried drifting through in one heat, but we found um, that the best approach in the long run was to be patient and do that in more heats. As soon as we saw any heat disappear from around the slit or the drift, um, we were careful to reheat it immediately in the fire. And so um, again, this is the slit, which we are also using a um, bottom radius tool um, in the anvil to back that up and keep the round um, material true. So what we do is we cut through the bar um, almost all the way, about 80% of the way, and then flip the bar over. And um, yep, you can see the drift or the uh, slit got a little bit stuck there, but we'll flip it back over and chisel through from the other side um, to create a chisel uh, path all the way through the bar. So we're creating just like a slit hole um, through the bar. And once that's complete, then we begin the next step, which is called um, drifting. We'll get back to finishing up those crossbars in a minute, but we're gonna switch gears and show a bit of work on what I call the threshold. Now this is actually a wagon wheel that's about five eighths by three inch, but we needed it to be bigger. So we drew it out in a rectangle, chiseled through it, and then what we're doing here is folding it back on itself to forge weld it together to make a larger, thicker piece of stock. This is one of the advantages of wrought iron is that it welds up beautifully. We are fluxing it a little bit um, with some borax here, which is not necessarily um, needed with uh, wrought iron, but it's a good uh, insurance step. So in the coal forge, bring it up to a forge welding heat and you can see dual strikers working here, Jared and Andrew swinging sledges to weld up this um, piece of wrought iron. back real quick to these crossbars. Now, there's a lot of communication that goes on between 
the Smith and the Striker, and you just heard me say light to my guy because I don't want a heavy hit. This is fairly uh, yeah. small pass through that we're doing, so we just need yeah. some delicate hits to get this thing established, and then we'll go full on and give some nice heavy hits to uh, chisel all the way through and set that yeah. up. Once that is done, like I said, here we are doing the drifting, and we're doing this over a hole in what's called a swage block. And again, being patient, as soon as we see the heat disappear yeah. from the piece, all the way. go back to the fire and reheat. And then it gets hammered all the way through. Now there is a small um, upset on that drift to um, allow for the, uh, the size of the material. This is a bit of fit up trickery. Um, here you can see I'm using that um, hardy hole as a place for that pass through to go down into as I straighten the bar. That's so that there's no damage done to the pass through, but it has a place to go. Back on the threshold piece, uh, once the welding was finished by hand, we did heat it up to the welding heat and draw it out to make it a little bit thinner uh, using the nasal 2B power hammer. Uh, this had to be a pretty precise uh, thickness to fit under uh, the grill properly at one point where it's going to join in. So we made a stop lock, which you can see on the edge of the die. And then here we are wire brushing the surface off so that on some of these final passes with the hammer, uh, the surface texture of the material is really nice and clean and uh, isn't scaled too heavily. Um, so there's a lot of thought that goes into even little steps like that. And uh, again, we're just working out that thickness on the hammer and then you'll see us bevel it um, by hand. Again, often the oldest way in blacksmithing is the best way. So setting this bevel, we just chose to use a flatter and have a striker hit it with a sledgehammer um, to forge a heavy bevel on each side of this threshold. Now, originally this piece was made probably the same exact way. And you have to imagine all of the um, envelopes of money or the eggs, um, you know, notes from the teller that were passed back and forth um, through this grill. Uh, what an amazing history this piece has. And we, again, are uh, so honored to be tied into it, making um, these reproduction parts uh, to uh, replicate uh, what was missing from this grill. And um, we thought about possibly using mild steel for this piece. Um, but when I looked through uh, my stash of wrought iron, I found this wagon wheel and we were like, that would be plenty big enough as long as we forge weld it and draw it out.
Once that threshold piece was complete, we again wire brushed it off after forging to help preserve the nice forged uh, surface finish in the piece and clean it up. Okay, everyone, as we wrap up this project, I wanted to do a quick walkthrough of the pieces and where they will wind up in the finished assembly. Our friend Pete is doing the final assembly, but this um, is the wagon wheel that we folded in half and hammered out. This will become the threshold for the teller's window. And then you can see this mock-up over here of the crossbars and how nicely they all turned out, forged out of all real wrought iron. These are the two sidebars, and he will take care of the assembly on these. But our job was to um, make the components up and get all the sizes right. You can see um, our forging compared to the original there. Um, it's just spot on. We we're checking everything with um, dial calipers, um, but it will really be awesome to see this beautiful piece by Samuel Yellen restored to its former glory. And um, we are proud to have done a bunch of work on the parts. So um, thanks for joining us on this video and we hope to catch you on the next one.